All right, all right. We, we're not winding up the show yet, but we're going to do things, going to do things a bit differently. Willis will kill me. We're going to do things a bit differently. So, Spot, Spot News is coming up shortly, but we have to release Jay. He needs to go and catch a nap. Your flight is in the morning. Yes. Are you going to be back? Definitely. Uh -huh. Definitely. But I think next time I have to sneak in so that I can explore more. You should. Kenya is beautiful, has extremely great things that you could do. I know. Um, so talk to us about, so what, what are you doing right now? Um, you know, where are you going right now? I'm going back home to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got couple of things to do next week before I head over to UK. Okay, so as you leave, what is the one thing that you could tell aspi young aspiring uh, footballers who are out there and they're looking at you and they're wondering, will I ever get to the point where Jay is? Well, I can only say that um, believe in yourself, mm -hmm. uh, believe that there's no limit to success, um, even though um, nobody ever said that it's going to be easy, right. you, you will encounter a difficult mm -hmm. period you know, along the line, but don't let anything take away your dream. I like that. Thank you so much, Jay. It's been pleasure. a pleasure having you here on pleasure Friday Briefing. Too. And when you come back, you have to come back here on the show. And then by that time, I'll have someone said that you did not give me a chance to warm up, and that's, that's the problem. That's why I could not coordinate. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry about that, but uh, yeah. I, I think um, considering the fact that it was your first time, yeah. I, I will also give you 6.5. Six point six po oh, wow. <laughs> See, guys, guys on Twitter are giving me two, two out of ten <laughs> mean people. Thank you so much, Jay. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank See you. you soon. See you. All right, so let's get straight to sports news, and we'll allow Jay uh, to leave so that he can get a nap for his flight tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, Jay. All right, so now let's get straight to sports news. And Team Kenya was exuding confidence as they arrived in Kampala, Uganda, ready for the World Cross Country Championships. However, it will not be a walk in the park as they come face to face with Team USA, most of who changed their Kenyan citizenship for the US. And as Moses Wahisi reports from Kampala, Uganda, Ethiopia and the hosts are expected to give the local lads a run for their money. Uganda is hosting the 42nd edition of the IAAF World Cross Country Championships at the Kololo Independence Ground, an upscale Kampala suburb, and it is all about the final preparations ahead of the Sunday's action. And as the local organizing committee rush with their final preparations, after a massive tune-up in Kenya at Kigari in Embu County, the Kenyan cross-country king and queens landed at the Entebbe International Airport in Uganda, beaming with confidence to star against the heavy lineup from the opposing nations. Yeah, I know we will be uh, Kenyans by Kenya because it's only the first. Because I know they are coming from uh, Bahrain, they are coming from other countries, but they are, they are uh, Kenyans. As you can see, the morale is very high. We have come here to win. We have not come here just to participate. We are here to win. We don't have injuries in the team. We are prepared. Let's wait for Sunday. We'll be able to do it. It will, however, not be an all-Kenyan affair with Team USA also eager to shine. USA will line up among them Samuel Chelanga, Stanley Kebenei, Shadra Kipchirchir, and USA national cross-country champion that year all Leonard Korir in its cross-country team. Uh, we love Kenya, we love you people, and just support us. I know you guys don't like us now, but hey, we're still the same, so <laughs> support us. Uh, go Team USA. I mean, it is what it is. it's what they take, but you know, no, it's what they say, but, you know, we run for United States. That's why we went to school, and, you know, we run for United States. So. Alfred Chipkerker of USA, a younger sister to Pauline Korea Kang, a Kenyan former World Cross Country Junior Gold Medalist, is expected to lead the USA women's senior team, and she will do it with some pride. So I don't really think that it's Kenya against Kenya. I think it's like Kenya, USA against the world, you know, like everybody has a chance because as if you're here, that means you're really well prepared. It is here at the Kololo Independence Ground where Ugandan independence heroes were being crowned. But let's talk about the 42nd edition of the IAAF. Yes, another set of heroes and also heroines are going to be crowned when the athletics championship, and that is matters to do with cross country, squared out at this venue on Sunday. Moses Wahesi, KTN Sports at Kololo, Kampala, Uganda. Finnish youngster Oliver Lindell cemented his name in the history books as his first ever role 
in uh, one of the prestigious Kenya Open as the uh, tournament got in today to at the Muthaiga Golf Club, winning a Ford Ranger. And as Robinson of Kenya now reports, it's also a day where a number of Kenyan golfers struggled to make the cut heading into the penultimate stage. Early Friday morning as golfers taking part in this year's Kenya Open Championship readied themselves for better results, one man was already thinking of overshadowing the results of the day. 18-year-old Finnish golfer Oliver Lindell hit a hole in one in hole 13 to become the first ever golfer in the tournament's history to achieve such a feat. With his achievement, Lindell walked away with a Ford Ranger worth 6.9 million Kenya shillings. Uh, great feeling. Um, I started well. I, I played pretty bad yesterday and the hole in one helped me a lot to make the cut today. I think I have small chance to win, but it needs two, two better scores than today's minus six. But it has to make almost again hole in one. <laughs> with the defending champion Sebastian Solderberg pulling out on the second day with an injury, other golfers were presented with the opportunity to bag this year's title. Kenya's Dismas Indiza recovered from yesterday's poor show to make the cut, hitting six buddies and a boogie to record five under par 66. He cited nervousness as the reason for poor performance on the first day. Indiza is hoping to make a better outing on the third day as he seeks the top gong. Simon Gige also made the cut after hitting five boogies and three buddies to record two under par 73. Adrian Swadia from France topped the leaderboard on the second day with nine under par 62 while Carlos Samoja slotted in on the second spot. <laughs> Wanderer with Uganda Cranes on Thursday at the Kenyatta Stadium in Machakas. The Harambe Stars are preparing for another friendly match against Democratic Republic of Congo, scheduled for Sunday at the same venue. Stars head coach Stanley Okumbi is planning to rotate his squad as he seeks to extend his unbeaten run to 10 matches. In October last year, Michael Olunga's strike gave Kenya a 1-0 victory against DRC in Kinshasa. So against the RC, of course, they're good, good quality. Technically, they're okay. Tactical, they're okay. So of course, we need just a good organization, both uh, defensively, offensively. Then we'll get it right. On, on Sunday, game is a tough one, and uh, hopefully, um, we can be at our best and uh, uh, produce the um, good, uh, good game. And hopefully, we can take also the maximum points. Uh, both Sunday, all I can say that uh, the DRC are ranked above us, and uh, it's a good team. So we are actually prepared, and we will give all all our all uh, in order to to win that game. George Buenjuli from Coast defeated KDS Hezron Maganga in the first leg of the Sport Pesce Boxing League held at the Kenyatta ground in Kisumu. In the bantamweight category, Martin Odor stunned Hamza side while Nick Okoth won his lightweight bout against Nick Wandera. Vincent Mwangi and John Kialo emerged victorious against Edwin Okongo and Eric Otieno respectively in the middleweight category. All right, so we have come to the end of Friday Briefing. Thank you so much for watching. It has been a great pleasure having your company tonight on the 24th day of uh, March 2017.
All right, remember that we have our big question tonight and we are we were asking you if you support the plan by NASA to establish a parallel results tallying system. That was our big key tonight and we've gotten quite an, an overwhelming response. And 69% um, of you say yes, that indeed you support the plan by NASA to establish a parallel results ta tallying system. And 31% there saying no, that they don't, did not, do not su uh, support this particular proposal. Thank you so much for watching. As you can see, it's time to start the weekend and relax. And so um, we will, we will uh, wind things up right now. And um, all right, so let's just play something for you. All right, so I can already see some memes have started to go crazy on the internet. All right, Venga, I, I, I see you. That's, please, Venga, go. That's what it's saying. I can, yeah, please, Venga, go. <laughs> All right, you, zero chills, I see, zero chills. That, of course, you, you know, that's JJ Okocha. He was our guest anchor tonight. And um, I'm already seeing quite a number of memes coming through. All right, so that's it for Friday Briefing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again. Uh, next fr next Friday on Friday briefing. Till then, do have yourselves a lovely weekend. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. Do safe things, and be kind to one another. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching.